to Outright Tech News. I'm Greg. And I'm Sean. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell as we work towards 100 subscribers. This week we'll be talking about a lot of new game announcements, the launch information for the new Xboxes, and some future tech that companies are going to be using soon. Yep. Our first story will be about the new Xboxes. Yeah, fi uh, Microsoft finally came out and gave us our, their plans for this holiday season. Uh, they're going to have the Xbox Series S, which is a console that we've known about for a while, but they haven't really said anything. And the Xbox Series X coming out November 10th. Uh, Pre-orders are going to go live for that starting on September 22nd. Um, the price points are a lot lower than what people were thinking. The Xbox Series S is going to be $299, and the yep. Series X is going to be $499. Um, do you want to kind of like go over what the specs are for those? Yeah, so they're both going to have 8-core AMD Ryzen 2 processors. The Series S will run at 3.8 gigahertz. The Series S will run at 3.6 gigahertz. Um, the GPU in the Series S is capable of 12 teraflops at 1.825 gigahertz. And the Series S is 4 teraflops at 1.5 gigahertz. Um, the Series X has 16 gigs of RAM. It can do up to 8K at 120 frames per second. It has a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. And the Series S has 10 gig of RAM, up to 2K, and up to 120 frames per second with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Yeah. Now, uh, finally, this means that hopefully Sony will have something to say on their event uh, this upcoming Wednesday, the 16th. Um, hopefully, we'll get pricing and, and full specs there. Yep. Um, I'm excited to see what this holiday season's going to look like. Uh, me too. Me too, especially if one of our other rumors that we're going to go over is true. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited about that. For sure. And next up, we have the Ubisoft Forward. Yeah, there were a, a lot of games uh, that were announced that we're, we've been hearing rumors about for a while. Uh, Scott Pilgrim is coming back uh, for the 10-year anniversary. They took this off the store a while back, and people were wanting for them to do like a, a re-release. So this is going to come with all the DLC, uh, uh, Knives Chow, and the uh, Wallace DLC. Uh, Prince of Persia is getting remade after how many years? Um, it's getting a lot of flack online right now because while the environments look great, the characters are pretty rough looking. Yeah, they still look like they're for the PS2. Yeah, now they have said this is alpha footage, so I expect them maybe in a few months to come back with hopefully better character models and try to rub it in our faces. Like, look how good they're doing now. I'm hoping. Yeah. They say when these are coming out? Um, I We don't have exact dates. I, I can't see Prince of Persia being soon with what they showed us. Right. Um, now, by some miracle, they managed to polish it up and... Um, Riders Republic is an open world extreme sports game that has dirt bikes, snowboarding, wing suits, skiing, and this giant open world. Uh, a lot of people have said it's like the spiritual successor to Steep, which is a game that Ubisoft put out before. Um, but some of the races looked absolutely insane with this guy on a dirt bike just like jumping from like rock to rock. That's crazy. With people like flying by him. Uh, I highly recommend looking at the trailer. If you're into extreme uh, sports, this is going to be the game for you. Just you and your friends having all sorts of crazy competitions yeah and then last but not least we have immortals phoenix rising this is <laughs> to me it it is very much like breath of the wild um giant open world that you can explore at your own pace uh, little mini puzzles that you can do to power up your character you have the gliding around um you have the giant castle right in the middle yeah. that's the final boss very much like uh breath of the wild um Having said that, I'm going to play the heck out of this game probably when it comes out on December 3rd. Um, I don't see why anybody who doesn't have an Xbox or a PlayStation who missed out on Breath of the Wild that wanted to pick that up shouldn't pick this up because yeah. I think it'll be very similar. Or PC. Or PC, that's right. Yeah, because it will be available on the Switch, the Xbox, the PS4, and the PC. Uh, and Stadia. And even if you have a Switch, I expect a lot of people to pick this up because after Breath of the Wild, it's been three years since Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. Um, people are, are starving for this kind of game, so I think this fills a good uh, hole that was played. Next up, we have Hyrule Warriors. So Nintendo uh, came out and gave us an update to Breath of the Wild 2 because they know that we're all looking forward to that game. Uh, they did say that they need a little bit more time to work things out, especially probably with COVID, probably delaying their, their development of that. And next year is uh, Zelda's 35th anniversary, so that'd be a good time to release it anyway. But to tide us over, they gave us this. It's uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. So if you played Breath of the Wild, you know they referenced this event quite a bit in that game. It's kind of how the world went to, to heck in a handbasket. Um, so you finally get to play through it. And not just as Link, but you can play as Zelda, uh, the four champions. They'll probably throw in some other Easter eggs, uh, Easter egg characters 
that you can play as. Uh, this is still going to be a Warriors game if you've ever played them. It's, you know, hack and slash, killing thousands of enemies. Yeah. Um, but it is good fun. It's just like, you know, you feel super powerful. Um, the difference with this one is uh, Koei Tecmo has actually worked closely with the Zelda team. So they worked with them as far as uh, the story, the dialogue. So this is going to feel more in line with a Zelda game than your typical Warriors game would feel. Okay. Something like that. Very cool. Um, but yeah, this one's coming out November 20th. Unfortunately, I would like to say I'm going to play this one when it releases, but this comes out the day after Cyberpunk, and I am sorry. Uh, <laughs> You'll be busy. I'll be busy, yeah. But uh, probably, as soon as I'm done with that, I'll pr probably pick this up because I'm a Zelda fan. And all I'm going to say is, Nintendo, if you bring back any more classic games, please give me Star Fox. Yes. We need some Star Fox in our lives. And not like Star Fox Adventures. No. Or... Just start us brand new with a brand new Star Fox title. Yeah. Start the story. Again. Put us in the ship, not not like running around a planet. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Nintendo Switch Pro Rumors, which uh, apparently Nintendo has been telling their developers to get games ready for 4k and there's also been a new patent for a new joy con that doesn't connect to the switch mm -hmm. so hopefully one thing this may be like a stay-at-home console yeah i mean the switch Lite is the all portable console so i could yeah. see them going the other way and going full home console yeah yeah i think it would fill in the gap really nicely just to have because you have your ultra portable your portable that can still go up to the TV and then just one that hooks up to the TV. Yeah, and, so, and if they do go the 4K route, I would hope that maybe some of their like bigger titles get like a 4K update. Like yeah. Mario Kart would look great in 4K with all the, the effects going on. Let's be real about Mario Kart. We need a new one. This one from the Wii U, bro. I'm agree with you, but <laughs> to tide us over, just give me a 4K update with like all those HDR graphics. Yeah. Uh, Breath of the Wild, I'd like to see 4K, and Mario Odyssey, all that. Just like, let me see it in 4K. No, I agree. Oh. Smash Bros. 4K, yes please. <laughs> Kick killing people in 4K. Yeah, yes great. please, all day. That'd be awesome. Um, now I wouldn't expect this before. I would say this would be a holiday thing next year if they're going to do it. Um, but imagine, and this is just me dreaming. This is just me dreaming. Zelda 35th anniversary, Zelda Switch Pro console. Yeah. Uh, they can make that look really nice. That's just a, a dream of mine. Yeah, I'd be down for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And for everybody that's in Europe, you can. They're also releasing a. Fortnite Switch console. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's the blue and yellow uh, Joy-Con variants, but they're swapped. So yeah. in Europe, you'll be able to get like double yellow or double blue, which I wish I really want the double blue. That's a right. nice color. Um, but nope, we're in the states and we don't get it. Yep. <laughs> Poor us. And then next up, we had uh, Android 11 launched, and just go over some of the new features with you. Um, now, if you so now if you long press the power button, it'll bring up quick controls, which will have your power options. It'll have access to your Google Pay cards and boarding passes, and also your smart home features that are that you have uh, attached to your Google Assistant, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I could see myself using the Google Pay one because I have like a Cash App card, I got my debit card, yeah. I have my fiance's debit card, so like just being able to like hit a button, swap between those on the fly would be pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't done this longer because like for the iPhone, like I don't have to unlock the phone, just double tap the power button and mm -hmm. it brings up the wallet, yeah. which is really nice. So I'm glad they have, they're getting closer to that and good with the Android, mm -hmm. especially since it looks like I may be switching over pretty soon. Which one are you thinking about getting? Uh, the Galaxy Z Flip. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Talk about that. And then they have new message notifications. They'll have their own dedicated space. All the messaging apps will have their own dedicated space on the notification tray, which is titled Conversations. They'll put all your messaging apps, messages right here for you, which is really nice instead of Android trying to organize them on its own. Yeah. It just throws them all there. You don't have to worry about it now. That's nice. Yeah. And then we're also going to get chat bubbles back, which seemed pretty neat. Is that similar to what Facebook Messenger does, where it'll put like a little icon on your face? So instead of having to go into the app, you'll see the little icon pop up on the screen. You just tap on it, you can chat on it, and close it, be on your way. And this version also has a built-in screen recorder. So if you're trying to share content that you're doing on your phone, you just pull down the tray, hit screen record, and do what you do. When you're done, hit it again, and then you got your, your screen recorded. That's nice. Pretty nice and easy. Mm -hmm. All right, and last but not least, we have Walmart 
got approval to start testing out drones and they're testing them out for delivery in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They started this past week. So if you live pretty close to them, you may be seeing drones dropping packages at your house. Uh, the drones fly at speeds of 32 miles per hour. They can travel 6.2 miles round trip and carry up to 6.6 .6 pounds. So not a whole lot. That's, not, that's like if you're like, oh, I need toilet paper or anything. Yeah. So it's for smaller orders. So yeah. obviously if you're ordering two weeks worth of groceries, they're probably, they're still gonna get a car delivering it to you. What about an, an entire fleet of drones? That'd be crazy. That would be cool. But one thing I thought was cool, instead of the drone having to land, it actually lowers the package down from 80 feet in the air to your front porch or sidewalk, which is pretty neat. Yeah. I'm just, I know uh, Amazon has tested these out too, so I'm just interested to see where this fall week. Amazon tested theirs out a while back, though. It was like last year. Yeah. Right? So it was a while ago. We still, I, I, at least I haven't seen any drone deliveries from Amazon. No. So this might be a, a, still a ways off. Yeah, I think so. Because right now they have to fly over um, unpopulated areas. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to fly directly over houses and stuff like that, which would be challenging, especially like where we live, because houses are everywhere. Yeah. They basically have to follow like the roads, you would think. Yeah, but 32 miles an hour, you, there's no traffic lights. You just yeah. like go. It, it could get here in a, a few minutes. Yeah, I agree. That was, it's just a cool story. I thought it's, it's interesting to see where this will take us in the future. Yeah. All right. And that's all we got for you today. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell, and we'll see you next week.